Thank you very much for that in introduction. I'm going to start by doing something slightly different. I want to ask you a question, and this is how do you value your time? You see, time is very important, particularly when you've only got 12 minutes. Firstly, I want to um, start by thanking those who've made this Nuffield the experience it has been. Firstly, Nuffield organisation, particularly our year group, Nuffield 13. And there's one person who hasn't been thanked over the past two days who's made a tremendous impact, certainly on me and the rest of our group, and that's Louise Manning, who's... Um, <laughs> she's organised a fantastic... Um, report training day and a presentation day and certainly my report is what it is with with her help so hopefully she's had the desired effect on my presentation as well secondly I'd like to thank HGCA my sponsor um, and every le levy power in the room for um, sponsoring my world travel it's been much appreciated thank you very much thirdly my parents as Wallace has said it's a real privilege to have a father who's a Nuffield scholar and we get on really well um, work well together and trust each other. But most importantly, this clicker will work, um, my wife and four kids, my wife Sarah and our four children, Emma, James, Matthew and Charlie. Um, we've been through quite a busy two years um, with Nuffield, the church that I lead doubled in size during that two years. Um, we had a fourth child and we've embraced total change on our farm. So we started Nuffield with three children and ended with four. I would suggest that's regenerative. <laughs> I want to just give you a little bit of a running order as to where I'm going over the next few minutes. We're going to start with a bit of background to me and my Nuffield study. Then we're going to look at where I went on my travels. <coughs> we're going to look at this idea of sustainable, dare I say it, and regenerative agriculture. And then four issues I just want to briefly touch on which should be vitally important to everybody in the room. And that is soil, water, profit, and time. And then finally, I'm going to look at what we did as a result of my scholarship. Okay, okay. bit of background. In a nutshell, I farm, we farm 1,000 acres for 10 separate landowners across six parishes, about 30 miles west of here. One of my jobs is to take care of all the spraying and fertilizer application. So this view is quite typical of what I get quite a few hours a year. I have a lot of time to sit and think. So one of my thoughts was, as I sat there before I applied for my Nuffield Scholarship, why is it that we grow a crop of wheat, let's say? We take it to harvest, and when we harvest it, that crop is in perfectly good condition. The soil's healthy. There's no compaction. It's got good root structures, good earthworms. Yet we feel the need to cultivate it, plough it, put a subsoil through it, turn it over, make clods, make dust, some of which blows away. Then we use cultivators, power harrows, dare I say, to turn that seed bed into something which our drill can then plant the seed. Finally, we roll it back down again. And what it occurred to me was what we finish with isn't a lot different to what we start with. I saw this picture on the front of a book. Here we have a farmer, Nathan Williams, in New Zealand, harvesting a crop of barley into a truck and immediately behind him planting the next crop in the same field. No cultivation. I thought, what if we could do that on our farm? What would the savings be? Just think the savings in manpower, labour, diesel, wearing metal. I had to find out more. So, I got on a plane and flew to North and South Dakota in July last year to meet some of the experts there. I wanted to see what they'd done on their farms and how, what difference it had made to the environment. The day after the conference last year, I flew to New Zealand and then on to Australia. And in February this year, we went to Paraguay and then on to Brazil for three weeks. And I briefly want to tell you about one day in Paraguay that I will never forget. And this is all because of Nuffield. In the morning, we went to see this chap, Victor Ramirez, and he had 15 hectares of land. He couldn't read or write, yet since embracing no-till, he'd put three of his children through, through university and moved out of his um, wooden shack into a brick-built house. Then in the afternoon, we went to visit this chap, Lucas, who was a um, Belgian farmer. His father 
had sent him to Paraguay in 1982 when he was only 22 years old. His father had bought 9,000 hectares of forest for a million dollars and sent Lucas there to develop it. We visited this year and that farm was 3,000 hectares arable, 3,000 hectares pasture, 3,000 hectares of um, native forest. And his comment as we left the farm was this, everyone copies and no one thinks, which for me is so true, particularly in this country. Now this hot topic of sustainability or regenerative agriculture, I can't answer it, many of us can't answer what it actually means, so I want to ask you a question. If you could sustain or regenerate your bank account, what would you choose? And if you could sustain or regenerate your health, what would you choose? How about choosing to sustain or regenerate your soil? What would you choose? See, I believe that sustainability maintains, but regenerative agriculture improves. I just want to touch quickly on these four subjects of soil, water, profit and time. One guy we met in Paraguay was Roland Wolf. Since embracing no-till in 2002, he's taken his soil organic matter level from 1.2% up to 2.9% when we visited. These fields we were standing in here had three days previously received 70 mil of rain in 20 minutes. Yet they were like this court carpet to walk on. Now why is soil organic matter relevant? Well, the higher the soil and organic matter, the higher the capability of the soil to retain moisture and retain nutrients. So when we get heavy rain, it doesn't wash away into the water courses. We can retain that nutrients and pass it into the crops that we're growing. We had the privilege of going to Iguazu Falls with Rolf Derp. She was our, our tour guide for a week. He could speak the local language. And he sent me a picture of Iguazu Falls 40 years ago when he moved to Paraguay. When he got heavy rain, the waterfalls would run a red colour. This was due to all the cultivation that was taking place in the local area. Heavy rain would wash all that soil into the streams and rivers and it would go over the falls a red colour. Since Rolf's moving to um, Paraguay and encouraging the farmers there to adopt no-till, which now stands at 97% of the farmland in South Paraguay, the, the falls now run this colour. I would suggest that's a huge bonus. I'd also like you to think about what it is going over the falls there. Soil, nutrients. Those farmers have spent time and money cultivating that soil and it's washing away. So what did we do as a result of that? Well, we put, up, we put our money where my mouth is and we decided to sell some machinery and change our policy on the farm at home. 100% no-till. With the help of Prime West, who are the UK um, cross-slot importers, we set about getting a local engineer to build this chassis. And through the spring and early summer of this year, we turned that chassis into this drill and planted um, cover crops straight after oilseed rape. So the cover crops were planted in July, straight into the rape stubbles. The day before, we planted wheat. They looked like this. We planted wheat straight into that cover crop with the drill we just built. And last week, the wheat looked like that. Not too bad, I don't think. That's nine inch rows, uh, Crusoe milling wheat. So in conclusion, I'd like to thank you, particularly enough, Phil, for this amazing experience. I believe I've learned a lot, implemented a lot, and I, fit, I believe that we need to regenerate our soils. How do we do that? Well, the use of cover crops, retained residues, we need to regenerate our soils to improve our yields and feed an ever-increasing population. As we've heard, 69 or 70 percent more food calories need to be provided by the farmers from the same land area to feed a growing population. We can't be sustainable, we have to be regenerative. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got and that, quite frankly, isn't good enough. We have to improve. We need to embrace, embrace no-till systems, which includes the use of cover crops, Retaining our residues, which means straw and stubbles, and using diverse rotations, which I believe includes a spring break crop and a legume. Uh, only then will I, see, will I believe that we will see improved soils, profitability and time use. I want to thank you very much and leave you with this closing thought. Thank you. <coughs>